Hi, it's Dave. Hi, it's Kurt. Welcome to the ADK Rock and Metal channel, and today we are going to be checking out the new upcoming single from Elysian Divide, and the song is, of course, Fall Down. Did I say it, of course? Yeah, why? Well, nobody, nobody knows. Of nobody course knows. it is. Nobody yeah, knows. Of it's course it's called Fall Down. Why would you not think it's called Fall Down? It's called Downfall. Uh, so we, this video has been coming out for a little while. We've had uh, a sight of it. Um, haven't had a chance to watch it, but we do know the song, because it's a song they've played live many times over the last couple of years. I don't recognise the title to be honest, but I'm sure I'll recognise it. You'll recognise it from Track Kicks In. Okay. So uh, yeah, let's let's just get into it and uh, we'll... We may pause, we may not, I, I never really know. Depends on the move. Depends yeah, on the depends on the move if we want to pause or not. But yeah, let's do this. Three, two, one, go! Play this line. I don't recognise it. It's as heavy as fuck, isn't it? If I'm honest, yeah. I mean, I've seen. I really like this band. I've seen them, you know, quite a few times, and I, I honestly don't recognise this song. But I love the sort of the open, the open riff, simple. Second guitar joins in. I'm not that keen on the lighting of the video. It's a little bit dark, but you know, you know, I like a you know simple performance video. And it's, it's, you know, I'm, I'm liking it. It's just a little bit dark in, in, in the visuals, but. It's, 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 it's a listen divide, isn't it? It's, it's, I mean, I, th I think Tashi's a fantastic vocalist and a fantastic front woman. Um, the drummer, Mike O'Neill, is barely recognisable in, you know, in the collared shirt, usually it's a black vest or a wrestling t shirt. But mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah, it sounds great. I mean, it's, it's a, just another great listen divide song for me so far. Nothing too different from what they've done before, but yeah, really like it. Look, great band. Okay. Nothing really more to add at this the moment. To me, this does sound different to what they've done in the past. Of course it does. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm You're hearing, never going to agree on anything to I'm, 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 Do you know what it reminds me of? The last single from Acadian, as upbeat as that, same yeah. guitar tuning. Yeah. But also that band Heart of a Coward, when they write thrashier material, it sounds like that musically. I love the panned guitar technique at the beginning where you've got it in one speaker, and then the other one comes in and layers it. The drumming from Nelly is is what makes this band even heavier, though, isn't it? I mean, this guy, the velocity, the intensity of his snow hits. I don't know anyone in the scene who plays uh, with that amount of aggression. Uh, in terms of Tashi's vocals, yeah, do you know what's great about this? She's resisting any urge to do like the you know angelic melody. She's really just going in there with a bit of a devil's snarl, isn't she? And uh, I'm really impressed. I just don't remember it live. I'm sure I would do because this is it seems to be a lot heavier than everything I've heard by them in the past. It could just be the way that they've got that meaty guitar sound in the studio because the production is fantastic on this, isn't it? The instrument separation so far is crystal clear. Yeah, that simplistic open riff, I think I would recognise, but mm. 
you know, apologies if, if, if I have seen you play this live, but it's, it's not ringing a bell. But I, you know, really like the, the power and the simplicity of that of the guitar, and, and you say a great tone as well. If you like that riff, go and check out Cut Rex by the band Prong from their 1994 album Cleansing. Tell me, Victor, he does something mm. similar. Okay. So I, I know this song. Uh, maybe it's because obviously I did a lot of the editing for things like Metal to the Masses and stuff when they played it. Okay. So I can go back to the last time they did Metal to the Masses and they played this song. Right. Um, mainly the, it's the chorus that I remember. Now the rest of the song, maybe that has had some changes from what it's like, because I do feel that this now sounds a lot heavier. Now that could be because I'm the only other time I've ever heard them they did, uh, I've heard a couple of their singles they did from a couple of years ago on music videos and the production of this is much stronger. Um, is it Rui is the new guitarist yeah. who took over for, was it from James who's the yeah, yeah so and I don't know how much he's now added to make this sound what it is on top of what John Paul's doing so there may be an element of that in the production in the, the guitar sounds uh, and maybe part of the riffs because the riffs are heavy but they don't uh, they're kind of generic heavy riffs yeah they're good but they're, they're not like you could sing, the party, could you, could you the sing them back to me right now probably not but when you're, when you're playing you can get into them um, and I'm wondering that's why where the chorus the chorus is a lot more hooky in it um, now with Atashi and, and her vocals I've always been very critical and in what way uh, over exuberance live so very strong certain pronunciations trying to push herself and it's great as a vocalist to try and push yourself to go as hard as you can but sometimes you can go either voice cracks she lets her adrenaline get the better of yeah the and, and sometimes you're like well, play it's trying to play outside your comfort zone sometimes and so watching her live there's always that risk of, is it going to come back to you uh, on your recordings now what I'm really glad to say is on the recording she's she's playing well within her threshold uh, and it works really really well so I really like it and I hope that from a live point of view that she doesn't go down the route where she goes off key and stuff like that where she does on and again because I when, it's very different when you're in the moment and you're down the front because you're the, you're in the bottom beat and you're in the crowd you, can, you don't hear what you hear at mixing desk mixing desk is a great place to hear it uh, and obviously when you edit the videos afterwards for the metal to the masses and stuff like that you can hear the off key and the off pitch sort of stuff like that and it's a criticism I've given to Kim in Scarlet and obviously in Tellers um it's a critique we've given to James in Millstone and stuff like that. So when you're singing clean and not just doing screaming heavy vocals, if you are off key or if you're flat, it's very, very apparent. And that was one of the really things I always said about listening to I was always worried that you're, I can't go sound like a dick now, but you're putting the focus on someone for how they look in the band over ability. Now this shows that it's not just that she's doing it. Her ability is very strong in this song. But on the live point of view, when I've heard when I've heard her on previous uh, performances and she was off key and stuff, I'm like, are you doing this for how she looks in your band, or are you doing it for the right reason, which is her ability? Because if it's her ability, then she's singing flat at this point and she's off key. But in this, in this performance, in this performance video, and on this recording, she sounds great. So I'd hope to hear that from a live point of view. And, and I'm not. I'm just being honest with what I've seen, what I've observed in live performances so but I haven't seen the LSC and Divide do a live performance now in what 18 months give or take I think I know so that's played... good uh, I saw with Andy's support and Nomadic Worm yeah. yeah so that was it's yeah. a fair old chunk of time so obviously there's a, there's a lot of, that's a long time that was as about a band. March April last year I think so there's a lot of transitions there so I'm really hoping that probably actually even like the Horn probably in uh, St Albans not St Albans Bishop Stalford was the last time I saw them oh, in okay. uh, Scarlet support so yeah, I'm really hoping that's where Atashi's really focusing on getting that pitch positioning on her live performances right, because she's a good vocalist and just needs to try not to constantly try and push where she goes out off key and stuff like that. But uh, that's always the hard part for a vocalist. If guitar, you can just tune it. It's if you go off pitch, you can't do that. If like, you ain't got a little thing, you can just twiddle your ear and something, you can, you can sort it. So uh, anyway, let's go back to the video.
Okay, let's see the mind fall down. Final thoughts, Andy. Um, I mentioned what the drum was wearing, Michael. Uh, I've just noticed from the second view, uh, second section we viewed that I like the uniformity the other guys are wearing. Yes. Yeah. Symbol black, you know, with the focus on your lead singer, Atashi. You know, you said, Dave, she, she changes her look on every gig. She's got a great range of outfits and stage wear, and, and really, you know, she's the focal point. Um, but saying that, you've got John Paul's leads, and he's mm. tapping on the on the neck and everything. Really, really interesting track. Lots of variation as well. He wasn't sort of formulaic all the way through. Really, you know, really interesting song. But as I, as someone who's a fan of the band, it's, it's hard for me to sort of... Um, I want to say be, 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 be sort of critical it's, it's just a really good Listen Divide song and I really enjoyed it and so the video I'd like to be a little more uplit and, and you know more more sort of um, more focus on the actual members that they were a bit you know in the shadows which is obviously the look that I was going for with the white room and the flashing lights but yeah enjoyable experience of watching and listening to that song Love the guitar tone. I know John Paul was a big fan of Machine Head, and you can certainly hear that in the in the guitar riffing. And I mentioned before, prong as well. Groove metal, that really, isn't it? But it does have some up tempo thrash moments. I don't think they rely too heavily on Atashi to carry the song either, which often is the case, isn't it? When you have a female fronting a metal band, how often is it? That's the focus. She will get us over the line. She will compensate for any lack of imagination we have. She will deliver the chorus. They didn't rely on her to do that, though. She did a good job in the chorus, but musically, great production. And we're gonna to have to mention it. Michael O'Neill, Nelly on the drums. It's not quite a blast beat. It's like the fastest double timing skank beat known to man. I don't know anyone else who does it. He just hits it so hard. He does love playing that shit. Yeah, I wish my drummers would do that rather than blast beats. Because it's, it's a lot clearer in the mix, isn't it? Good guitar solo as well. A lot of thought gone into that. And, it, and obviously he made sure that the, the camera, person running the camera, <laughs> followed him for his pinch harmonics and yeah. all his, you know, long fret stretches on the board. Great song. Probably the best thing I've heard by them. I, I, if that was a male vocalist, would we call it metalcore? When, when it, it goes in more of a melodic direction? Probably would, wouldn't we? I wouldn't call that metalcore though. And is that just because Atashi's doing something different vocally? Mm. It, I mean, it's very groove metal. Yeah, um, I would say groove metal. Yeah. Because uh, even with a metalcore vocal style over it, it still feel groove metal. It's, it's really settles into the beat. It's got it's got the punctuation you want. Uh, love all the lead guitar parts. Uh, do really like the vocals on this track. Um, and I just want to say that my critique is from some previous live performances. So that's what I'm saying. I do really like what's been done on the album. So it's very clear that it can be done. So it could be just live jitters. Um, I think the song stands out. It's a really, really good track by them. Uh, disappointed in the video. Uh, and this only from a video point of view. So the actual shots are all fine. All the, the movement around. Uh, hiring a white room. So there's, there's kind of a missed opportunity here. You've got a white room, they're all wearing black, so you keep the lights up to get that contrast. That's what I was saying, yeah. You, you don't darken the room and then put red light in it unless you're going to do something else. Then they should have been wearing white, or you do something to kind of, you do a black room with them wearing white and then you drop the lights down to get the contrast. Because what you ended up finding was shadows with black outfits just felt really hard to kind of really focus. You didn't get that crisp clarity. Um, I'm surprised they didn't go down with that kind of that that really sharp highlight white room with the red strobes. Maybe they wanted it to feel dark and dingy, and they could only get a white room, and that was the only option. So they decided to darken it down. Um, but personally, I would have black room that if they were going down that route. If you're going to black room it, and you want to up light it, and you want to wear black, fine. Then go really dark on it and just get rid of it because there was nothing going on in the back walls. There's nothing going out on the floor. You don't want to see any of that if you're going for that kind of vibe. But because you could see it and they just turned the lights down, it didn't quite work as well for me. Uh, but the actual shots they used within it, it was just the unfortunately the environment was wrong. Uh, really good close ups of Natasha, I thought they were great, lots of using different viewpoints. She had a great look to her. Uh, good to see the band having consistency. Now, some of their promo shot, shot photos they've done, you've got a really good, good band image, and then you'll see another photo from a promo shot, and they're wearing like band t shirts and stuff. And I'm like, keep continuity get a consistent image, otherwise you just don't really know what you're going to get. Uh, they did a 
gig last night. I saw the, the, the photo that I used for that. It was really, really cool. Uh, Tashi seems to be kind of getting, she was holding like a baseball bat and that. She's going down like a kind of Harley Quinn kind of vibe at the moment out of her. Uh, but yeah, it, it really works. I, I was uh, yeah really impressed with where they're going and I think they've got some uh, good times ahead of them. That is heavy as well. But let's mm. not forget that. that if, they could, if they pull that off live, which I've no doubt they will with Nelly and John Paul in the band, the, the bass player, sorry, I should mention him as well. I, I, I love watching him. He loves what he does. Yeah. He does, doesn't he? He's, he enjoys it so much. He's quite playful with the audience as well. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next record. Mm. If they're going in that good. direction. Yeah. There we go. Listen to Vibe. Now, if you enjoyed our video today, please do like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you on another video sometime very soon. Take care.